the possible return of nerf zombie strike the spamf goes flywheel while the zinc goes bullpup and the community wishes happy trails to even more nerf tubers i'm grim i'm jolt king 627 i'm vile mods and i'm kt of family foam sport we are your hosts all that and more on episode 23 of the Foam News Collective. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and be sure to leave us a comment down below. Let's get on with the news. The game is ultimately all about momentum, or is it? Gavin Fuzzy might like to offer a differing opinion. After an extensive development period starting in 2021, the long-awaited SPF, or Spamp Butt Flywheel, is now ready for release. The Super Best Friend is a premium 3D printed brushless flywheeler with pre-soldered plug-and-play electronics. Similar to the FDL or the Momentum, the Strife But Fancy has a plethora of fancy flywheel features packed inside, including a built-in B-car, CNC aluminum cage, built-in tracer unit, UV LEDs to charge glow darts, adjustable FPS, 3-mode select fire, and an OLED screen for tweaking settings on the go. Although it currently isn't listed for sale anywhere, the Sparkly Big Flashlight pre-orders are currently open via private message to Gavin's Etsy page. If you're stateside and want to avoid international shipping, Silver Fox Industries will be offering a build-it-yourself kit and fully assembled units in batches of 10 pre-orders per wave. Keep an eye on their socials for updating pricing and availability. Via videographer Al Shoot Stuff, Gavin has also teased the SPFBP, an upcoming bullpup version of the blaster, although no details or release date are currently available. Links to everything down in the description. 3D designer Benito has created something that may have some bearing on the future of Nerf accuracy devices, presenting the Acorn, a dart rifling device similar to a SCAR or B-CAR, but instead of string or bearings, it sends excess air from the plunger tube of a Springer or air blaster through twisting channels imparting spin on the dart without adding unnecessary friction. Because this design doesn't make contact with the dart, it's more forgiving of 3D printer tolerances, making printable centering devices more accessible to newer hobby members and casual 3D printer users, like me. Tuned to various FPS ranges, it's shown excellent results according to early testers, and will come in both clamp-on and screw-on collet versions that fit on most standard barrels. Although it's not available publicly at press time, Benito is not stringing you along. He intends to release it on his principles page in the very near future, so be sure to follow him there, link in the description. Gavin isn't the only one going bullpup, introducing Magnesium, a bullpup remix of the Zinc by 3D designer Difficult Total. This trusty sidearm based off a 118 design Zinc platform takes Talon Mags fed via a magwell near the rear of the blaster. This new design only requires a few brass inserts and screws on top of the typical Zinc hardware kit. The Magnesium reliably caps out at a strong 160 to 170 FPS, and there are plans to make a version that can hit 200 using Zinc hardware kits. If you'd like to build one for yourself, files are available on Thingiverse. Link in the description. Following up on the Conductor's Revolver and his first X-Shot Micro reshell, Domachevsky continues to innovate with the Micro's tiny power system. His second reshell is a flintlock-inspired single-shot design, and his third is... this. The same flintlock design, but with not one, but two micros for double the fun. All of these reshells can be constructed with just the recycled hardware from the micro and the 3D printed parts, making them fun, easy, and inexpensive to build. STL files to print your own are available for a reasonable price on Domachevsky's Etsy, and Maritime Foam offers complete printed kits with or without included X-Shot micros. Check out all your options at the links down below. Things are always busy over at SFI, but after finding some modeling time, Ryan has finished a plethora of parts for you to enhance your Strife X with. Offered in more colors than you could want for, you can get a $2 top plate filler, a $2 Bobo style rev trigger, a $3 Fox Fang mag release, a $12 Picatinny top rail conversion, $20 flared magwell, or get them all as a bundle for $35 United States dollars. Find them on the Silver Fox Industries web store, link in the description. Over on the Discord, community member and prior Mod Spotlight winner Null made funny stickers of... nothing! And other things that aren't Nerf. These designs, which parody the classic Nerf logo with the names of a number of other major blaster brands, are available as stickers, t-shirts, and plenty of other things over on his Redbubble page, linked below. While Nerf Taiwan has quit the YouTube game, 
He's still got leaks to share, and this one could be evidence of an old line coming back from the dead. Originally posted on the Chinese forum site Baidu Taiba, he shared a thread titled The Zombie Series is Confirmed to be Restarted. What do you think of the new zombie style? Included in the post is an image of a hammer primed revolver with elements of existing shell designs, including a hammer shot back end, Fortnite 6 SH trigger, and a drill like grip with four dart storage spots. The perspective makes it hard to determine the blaster's capacity, but it appears to be either four or five shots based on how the darts aligned with shell. While the Z logo from the original 2013 Zombie Strike line isn't present on this blaster, there are valid reasons to think this is, if not a reboot of the line, at least an intentional callback. Overall, the form factor resembles an impact driver with a large socket attached, fitting Zombie Strike's post-apocalyptic recycled materials aesthetics. While community responses to the blaster's aesthetics have been mixed, the blaster is nonetheless unique as Hasbro's first fully printed ink blaster with a new shell design. Let us know what you think in the comments below on this potential Zombie Strike 2.0 line and check the links to the original posts down below. A toy shelf staple since 2016, Andrea's Rifle, a Busby tie-in blaster for The Walking Dead comic books, is finally getting a new variant inverted. With little fanfare, this color-swapped version of the single-shot bolt-action classic has started appearing on shelves across the U.S. If you need one for your collection, you'll need to check out your local Target. Now, if only they'd reissued Michonne's Katana. Dartzone has just released a pro-level Jolt reskin with their new Max Solo Pro. This pocket-sized Pro Blaster folds up for easy storage and hits an advertised 120 FPS, presumably with its included Bamboo 2X darts. You'll have to wait, unfortunately, as the listing on Walmart.com is already showing them out of stock, which is not surprising since it's a pinty price at only 15 USD. Hasbro has brought back yet another retired blaster with tie-in screen printing. Listed on Amazon for $39.57 United States dollars, this Captain America side strike includes 10 darts, the blaster, and its original holster, all with themed screen printing. As much as I love a zombie strike throwback, this one is not my style. But if you're interested, the link, as always, is down below. Boldly Played, the company that created the blaster boards most of us have seen on other Nerf YouTube channels, has recently released blaster blocks. These building blocks are meant to be stacked or built up like large foam Lego bricks and then shot down with your favorite Nerf blasters. You can get them in three different sized packs on Amazon for 35, 40 or 45 USD, all of which at the time of this recording have a $10 off coupon available. Links in the description. Happy 45th anniversary to Lennard Toys, a historic player in the blaster market. If you'll be in the Missouri area between now and December 23rd, stop by Lennard's massive toy warehouse liquidation sale to celebrate and pick up some inexpensive stuff. Looking at the warehouse Facebook page, Willis noted that more than just Lennard products are on the shelf, including Dart Zone and X-Shot blasters. Located in Sugar Creek, Missouri, they'll be open Wednesday through Friday from noon to 5 p.m., Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturdays from noon to 4 p.m. Catch the address and the link to their Facebook down in the description. Nerf was one of four new inductees to be added to the Toy Hall of Fame. Alongside Cabbage Patch Kids, Baseball Cards, and the Fisher Price Corn Popper, Nerf was voted in because its toys are designed for indoor and outdoor activity, with both kids and grown-ups playing together, beating out other contenders such as Battleship, Bingo, and even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If you'd like to read more about other inductees or finalists, links to the article will be down in the description. Since early 2022, Nerf parent company Hasbro has been involved in U.S. International Trade Commission litigation against Gel Blaster, Splatterball, and Dart Zone parent company Primetime Toys over alleged patent infringement. Hasbro exclusively licenses the patents for Gel Ball launchers from another toy conglomerate, Spin Master, who picked them up in their 2019 acquisition of Orbeez from the Maya Group, who made the Exploders toys starting in 2011. The public documentation of these hearings includes a lot of interesting back and forth. The respondent companies attempted to argue that soft absorbent polymer or SAP products existed prior to the Exploders patent that could potentially be loaded into existing airsoft equipment, but that argument didn't hold water. 
Hasbro attempted to prove that it had significant industry investment in the gel ball space, but that bubble was burst when the numbers they provided didn't hold up to the standard. Ultimately, the US ITC judged that Hasbro's patent claims are valid and made a recommendation, not a final ruling, that all the other gel ball companies be hit with a limited exclusion order stopping the import of all of their gel blaster products into the US, as well as a cease and desist order blocking them from any further gel ball blaster business inside the US as well. At this stage, we are currently in the presidential review period where the US president has 60 days to review the case and decide whether to override the US ITC's recommendation, a very rare occurrence. If this recommendation goes through, Hasbro will effectively exclusively own the gel ball market in the US. The public documentation of this case also contains redacted information on upcoming Hasbro products, but it's clear that this is in reference to the four gel fire blasters that have already been revealed in the time since this case began. Additionally worth noting is a smaller legal battle that occurred in the West Texas District Court during the same time frame, this time with Hasbro as the defendant against Gel Blaster, who accused them of stealing electronic control technology from their unreleased products and using it in the Gelfire Mythic. This is a pretty weird one that ultimately resulted in an out-of-court settlement, but interestingly, discussion of this exact topic was excluded from entry in the USITC case at the request of Hasbro's representation. Links to all the legal docs down in the description. They're more interesting than they sound, I promise. The Maryland Foam Alliance has dropped an updated Flag Dash rule set for the Maryland Foam Tournament to be held in 2024 at Maryland Mayhem. According to Boomstick, the rules have been completely reformatted and points and penalties have also been tweaked. Competitive teams preparing for this event should definitely check out the full new rule set at the MFA website, linked down below. And now for an unfortunate case of sour grapes. Singapore-based foam dart hobby online retailer and speed dart event organizer Black Raisins has found themselves under community scrutiny when they unexpectedly postponed their Speed Dart Singapore 2023 tournament just five days before its original November 11th date, leaving a number of teams out to dry. Competitive foam flinger and Nerf Singapore host Sim Jia Jun, known to the hobby as Piggy, took to social media to express his concerns about the date change and particularly about a team associated with Black Raisins having advanced information about the postponement. In his post, he said that a member of the team in question informed him that they were allowed private training sessions with speed dart equipment, a privilege not afforded to other teams in the competition, creating an unfair situation. Piggy also raised concerns about communication, pointing out that the postponement was not posted widely or conveyed directly to teams who had already signed up for the event only being posted to the Black Raisins Discord. In response, Pine of Black Raisins banned multiple members of Piggy's team from the Discord and filed a police report against Piggy, posting redacted photos of this report on their public Discord and social media and claiming that Piggy's post qualifies as defamation. Although these photos are largely not legible, they do clearly show Piggy's name and the small amount of readable text seems to confirm the defamation accusation. According to Piggy, he has not yet been contacted by the police and has not seen the contents of the complaint against him. Nonviolent police reports such as this can take a long time, even years before they're processed and followed up on, so this issue could remain in limbo indefinitely. Black Raisins did not respond to requests for comment at press time. This is a developing story which we will follow up on as more information becomes available. Over on eBay this week, a pair of special long shots in gold and silver appeared, raising a stir as the community pondered the weight and the likelihood of their legitimacy. Via contacts at Hasbro, we have been able to confirm that the gold and silver painted blasters, modified stock units, rather than specially cast shells, do exist in the company given out as prizes to Hasbro employees, likely for reaching specific sales milestones. According to the seller of Times Past, they came from a private collection of an anonymous ex-Hasbro employee, along with a number of inbox products with green internal company tags. Based on the info, along with the information gleaned from the listing of photos, it would appear that these blasters are legitimate internal Hasbro artifacts. Congratulations to the winner of both auctions who paid $750 for the silver and $1,000 for the gold. It seems like we just reported on Nerf Tubers throwing in the towel, but here we are again, just a few episodes after he appeared on our podcast, bidding farewell to American Foam. In his video, Brad talks about repetitive reviews becoming dull and the YouTube game 
not being financially viable. We haven't seen the last of him though, since his plans on staying involved in the hobby and creating content about some of his other passions like vintage video games and horror movies. Following right behind Brad is Wayne, aka Warhawk, of the YouTube channel Nerf Talk. In a very heartfelt video, he explained his struggles climbing the YouTube algorithm as well as running the channel at a financial loss. Like Brad, Wayne isn't leaving the hobby, but just stepping away from making content. While we hate to see more creators fall to the ever-present YouTube burnout, we're glad that both Brad and Wayne are at least prioritizing themselves and wish them the best of luck on their future endeavors. This episode on the Mod Spotlight, we have a blaster from recurring winner Grim Reaper 2458. Grim is always pumping out really high quality integrations, and this blaster, dubbed Spartan, is no exception. Inspired by Orange Crate 76's Skeleton Key, Spartan is a combination of an Alpha Hawk and a Rough Cut. It's been painted up in a darker, but still aesthetically pleasing, color scheme of black and dark green, with some pretty nice weathering on there too. Features like the patches or the hanging tag really tie this one together. Nice work, Grim. And that's all for the news. Thank you for watching our 23rd episode. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to, as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a friendly or constructive comment, and tell your friends about us. Be sure to drop by later this week for the accompanying podcast with special guest hobby designer Silly Butts. If you'd like to take your support further, consider checking out our merch store, or sign up on the Ko-Fi page for some additional perks. A massive thank you as always to our Ko-Fi supporters, Discord boosters, as well as our contributors to the news. Thank you for watching, we'll be back in two weeks with our final episode of the year. I have a lot of text. It's so much to read. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting lost. I'm getting lost in the sauce. There's a lot of words here, okay? There, there is, there is a lot of words. There's a lot of words and a lot of different toggles to mess with. Since everybody always wants to freak out over it, let's let's throw this pile of junk up on the sh screen. Let them let them look at this and just be confused. No, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Nerf was one of four new intendees. Intendees? I need my tendies. Yum. My chicky tendies. Yum. Today on the Mod Spotlight, we have a blaster from recurring winner, Grim Reaper. This again? Also, I hope you think that the teacup is good because it actually has tea in it. It's tasty. The public documentation of this case contains redact. The public documentation of this case also red. The public documentation. I swear I can say the word documentation. Be sure to drop by later this week for the accompanying podcast with special hobby designer. Spe I mean, he's a special designer, but it, I was supposed to say special guest hobby designer, silly butts. Um, cool. Free bloopers.